we have an announcement today. I don't know if you realize you came to an announcement, but we have a pretty big announcement today. I, I hope uh, it will turn out to be one of the most important announcements in the history uh, uh, of architecture, frankly. The latest stat that came out last week is we have six and a half million fewer homes in America than we actually need. I gave a talk here at South by a year ago, and the stat a year ago was five and a half million. And in fact, as you all can imagine, given what's happened to the economy in the last year and mortgage rates, building has slowed down. So I actually expect this number to be like even worse by an, by an even greater margin next year. If you zoom out globally, 1.2 billion of our sisters and brothers that we share this planet with, some of you have heard me say this line before, but I mean it. It's people that if you knew them and loved them, they live in such a way that you would not tolerate. You would weep, you would cry, you would take a second job, you would do whatever you had to do to get those people into a sensible place to live. Those numbers are so big, it would actually help, <laughs> sort of, you think numbers that big would like catalyze us and galvanize us to action, but they're so big, we're like, we don't intuitively have a sense for numbers that big, and so it's sort of easy, it would actually be easier if it was like 100,000. We actually might take more action, because it would feel like a number range that we could like wrap our head around. But when we're talking about millions and billions of people, and millions and billions of, of, of houses, it's just sort of like you, you see the number, it washes over you, and you like go back to work and almost pretend you didn't hear because you don't want to let your mind go to the place that imagined that much suffering. You don't want your mind to go there. It's hard to live that way. No human being can bear <laughs> that thought. And usually conversations about homelessness, about affordability, about the American dream in housing, they're very like uh, depressing <laughs> conversations. And so we, we tend to sort of like try to avoid them if we can, because even the solutions that are offered, we don't like them. And it's not because people are wicked, stupid, or like trying to make the world worse. It's that we have a paradigm of building that has been around for a long time, and we have squeezed all the water out of the rock that we can. We've squeezed as hard as we can, and there are no more savings to be found. There are no more savings to be found in conventional ways of building. And so to try to squeeze cost, we hire less skilled labor and we use a lower quality of material. That's the only sort of way forward. But of course, this gives us like a, an even worse situation because the, the quality of the housing stock, both in America and globally, goes down. And it makes cities and people angry, so you don't want that built in your backyard. You layer on regulation, which makes it even more expensive and slower. I've called this in past talks the housing doom loop. The result of trying to build affordable housing, uh, this is sort of the elephant in the room. If we're honest with ourselves, it's dystopian. That, that is actually a very new and very recent affordable housing project. It probably cost millions of dollars, but it's like kind of hard to get excited about. It's hard for a politician to stick their neck out and advocate for something like that. It's hard for communities want a bunch of that built in their communities. It's hard for the people who live in places like that to feel like they're really a part of the same human race that the people in this room are a part of. And it's 2023. I've been saying this for like five years now. It's 2018, 2019, 2020. It's 2023, and we've got to do better. And my company, Icon, who is not the star of the show today, actually. But we are trying to do better because something new is happening in the world of robotic construction, specifically construction scale 3D printing. And literally, it's out of the box. All of a sudden, we have a way of building that I think is resilient and be I don't know, some stats maybe for a second. This is like one of our very high-end show homes. And the wall system that it was delivered with is the same wall system we deliver on every project. It exceeds building code for strength by 350%. It exceeds building code for energy efficiency, sustainability, and human comfort by 250%. We can build it faster. Anybody else tried to build a wall system like that, it's much more expensive. And I think it's incredibly beautiful and allows for a lot of design freedom and sort of dignity to sort of be back on the table all for the same cost, or lower and faster and cheaper than conventional building. You guys can see out the door here, out the window here, what we were so delighted to build for the city of Austin here at the Long Center. Those organic curves and slopes and forms that I, I hope all of you will come out to the party here in a minute and agree is incredibly beautiful and something like we're proud to have here 
in Austin, that's the same price as if we showed up and built a box. It's not more expensive for us to build these like incredible things. And I think this can help us change the conversation about affordable housing. I think it can make it exciting again. What you should appreciate about all these shapes and probably a million more that we could have drawn, those all take the same time to build and they're the same price to build. Many of them are much stronger. Some of them more sort of uh, interesting geometric shapes. If I had a piece of paper up here and I stood it up, it would fall over. But if I fold it, it'll stand up. It's structurally more rigid with no change in material properties or additional reinforcement. And so all of a sudden you get strength, you get comfort, you get safety, you get resiliency, you get energy efficiency, you get beauty and dignity in a way that was just, you, you, the, the, the conversations about affordable housing are often a conversation about what you can't have. And all the conversation, all of a sudden the conversation gets to be about we want the same exciting future for every member of the human race, regardless of socioeconomic standing. And I think advanced technologies finally make that possible. So Initiative 99, which is something we're announcing today. So here comes the announcement, and then I'm going to get up the panelists. We are launching today at South by Southwest in this very room, Initiative 99. Initiative 99 started as an internal exercise at ICON where once a year or so we would drop anchor and we would try to imagine the very best house that we could build for $99,000. And as our costs have come down, as our technology has matured, as our efficiencies have improved, as we've taken control of our supply chain, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, this year when we did the exercise with our team, it felt like something had shifted. All of a sudden, the houses we could design for $99,000 were very compelling. And it was, uh, the whole team sort of said, I was like, we got to tell everybody. Like, this is like, this is what we started this company for. And so Initiative 99 is really to say, Icon needs help. And the, frankly, the world needs our help. And specifically, we need the help of the global architecture and design community. Because we have been building and designing houses the same way for a thousand years. And just so you know, this isn't CEO hyperbole. I pulled up pictures of thousand year old homes and they are boards and nails and stick frame. And we would like to partner with the very best architects, designers on the planet to help us imagine a future, specifically a future for affordable housing that everyone can be excited about. We need a moonshot for affordable housing. Moonshots are these seemingly impossible things where people from all over and from all kinds of background come together to make something incredible happen. We've done it for space, we've done it for lots of things, and now we want to do it for affordable housing. So Initiative 99 launches right now. It is a year-long global contest to design houses with advanced technologies that can be built for $99,000, and we're putting up a million-dollar prize. Why? Yeah, woo, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go, there we go. Why a million dollars? Because that felt like, a, like, like architects often chase after like big opportunities, like, like whether it's skyscrapers, commercial opportunities, and, and we felt like we don't want the intern to do it. I mean, if, fine, if you're an intern, don't be insulted. Uh, <laughs> we don't want you to do it as like a small exercise at the, end of the, at the end of the day on a Saturday. We want your very best efforts, just like you were chasing after a major architectural opportunity, and we're prepared to put our money where our mouth is. And it felt like with a million dollars, we could get the world's attention, Yes, we could have built some houses with that money, but like for 99K, we could have built 10. Good job. We could have built 10 houses. And the hope is this, this contest catalyzes the designing and building of thousands of homes for that same amount of money. We intend to build some. We're already working with partners here locally that you're going to hear from in a minute with the Liz Lambert Group and others to get these homes built. We're going to open source all of the designs at the end of the contest. And I frankly hope my competitors build more and faster than I do. And so that's Initiative 99. This is a call to arms to the global architecture and design community to help us design and imagine a future that these advanced technologies can help us actually have and actually build. If we keep doing what we've been doing, we're going to get what we got, and what we got ain't working. You tracking? Perfect. Initiative 99 begins now.